there is high hope for these kids. Uh, uh, one, the hope is that uh, they, they will feel themselves to be part of the development of this country. Last week, when we told the parents that a bus is coming, they said, wow, a bus for our kids? That's wonderful. And then we told them two people are bringing it, a male and a female. So with the provision of the bus, definitely will really improve their life. It will facilitate their movement. In fact, it will encourage others to come. Yes, I love the Janga bus. I love it. I love it. In 2018, we started planning the Jenga Bus project. Hi, I'm Raimi. And I'm Alex. And we're raising money for the Jenga Bus project. Alex and I work with the charity Cadect, and together with many others, we were going to make this project a reality. The reason we bought the bus in Europe rather than in the Gambia was for various reasons. Firstly, because the majority of buses are imported from Europe anyway, it would be much more cost efficient to do the journey ourselves and to cut out the middleman. And in addition, we also wanted to fill the bus with donations for the school. We also wanted to use the fundraising process and the journey as an awareness raising campaign for deaf education in the Gambia. The journey is going to take us from the UK through France, Spain, Morocco, Western Sahara, Mauritania, Senegal and finally the Gambia. During the journey we also wanted to learn what accessing an education looked like for children in the different countries we passed through. After a year and a half of fundraising and planning, we finally had our bus, and in the morning of the 18th of January, we set off. Are you excited? I'm very excited. We made our way steadily through France and Spain, over the snowy Pyrenees and south across the central plains. We crossed over the Mediterranean at dawn, and after a semi-painless three-hour border crossing, we were in Morocco. We needed a quick pit stop near Rabat as the engine kept cutting out on the motorway. But after some gentle tinkering, we were back on the road. <laughs> Although it still continued to struggle. We crossed over the Atlas Mountains and down into the Dra Valley, the gateway into the Sahara for thousands of years. We were then officially driving through the Sahara. We had planned to meet with an organisation working with nomadic families living deep into the desert. Families living this far into the desert live almost solely off their livestock, either from the meat and the milk, but also in this family's case from camel tourism, as there is a tourist camp about an hour's walk from here. For the children living here, like Mohammed, Fatima and Tulda, there is no option to go to a normal school. So some organisations have set up Berber tent schools that provide primary education. After that they have the option to go to secondary schools in the nearest town and then stay with relatives during term time. This is what the eldest son Mohammed is doing, but when we ask what he wanted to do when he finishes, he says come back to the desert and work with his camels. It was then time for us to push on south, towards the coast. We are now just north of Tagazu in Morocco, on the coast. This is where we're camping tonight. We also then managed to finally get the bus sorted. A small valve was replaced and it was as good as new. What do you think? I mean, this road is... Um, well, it's a desert road, isn't it? <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, it feels so good. So we've just crossed the border into Western Sahara. Um, but unsurprisingly, there was no border because Morocco thinks there's no border. We were then at no man's land, a small strip of land between borders littered with landmines left over from the war between Morocco and Mauritania when fighting for control over Western Sahara. Welcome to no man's land. It is now controlled by the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, the partially recognized de facto sovereign state of Western Sahara. However, many deem this particular stretch of desert without any rule or jurisdictions. The road then ended and we had to make our way blindly through burnt out cars into Mauritania. And then after a five hour customs control, we were in Mauritania and we followed the flat desert road for 500 kilometers to the capital Nukshot. Over a quarter of Mauritanians live in this city and as desertification increases, this number continues to grow. The National Highway South then gradually turned more and more like a dirt road and after a while disappeared entirely and just turned into soft sand. We then got to our penultimate border, into Senegal. We've become good at waiting. We have become good at waiting. What are we doing here? We're waiting. Another one of uh, Google Maps' uh, wonderful adventures. <laughs> here we are in uh, a national park. Uh, <laughs> Not quite sure where exactly we're going, but it's really quite beautiful. So, just taking the scenic route. Come on. We eventually made it to Dakar, where we had planned to meet with an organization working with vulnerable children in the city. But first, lunch. An incredible shared plate of rice, fish, and vegetables. We then met some of the young people like Jatul, who dreams of being a singer like her grandmother and following in the footsteps of her many powerful female role models. It was then time to head south to the Gambian border. After crossing the border, we wanted to give the bus a good wash and incredibly met someone who used to work at the same garage we bought it from in Germany. Yeah. And now it's back to my land. Yeah. <laughs> Meet me too. <laughs> but I'll be very happy to see my company again in Africa. <laughs> so I will be just volunteering to help any small problem they have, they can yeah. save me. I can just need help, little help. Yeah. Then came the day for our final leg to the school, unaware of what was awaiting us. Wow. The whole school had come to meet us on the road a huge procession of children running alongside the bus. We've made it. I say we are all citizens of this country and they have right to education as we have. Whatever we can do, they can do it. In fact, one of our ministers is a special deep guy and is performing state, state issues. So whatever we can do, they can do it. Uh, it's a dream that comes true for us because it was a challenge to see how best to transport these kids to the school. Because you can see now, a parent was just telling me now that her friend also has a deaf child in first year. So they say that tomorrow they will bring that deaf child to register that because it's actually boss now. So personally we are very, very happy. And we are extending our thanks to anyone who contributes in raising funds in order to purchase this boss for, for our, our children. <laughs>